So welcome, it's lovely to have you with us. So if you could introduce yourself and what subjects you did at Sixth Form College. I'm Nia Boland and I did history, politics, English literature and AS further maths. I'd already done maths and creative writing. Five and a half A-levels, that yeah. is amazing. And so then what are you studying now and where are you studying? Um, I'm studying human, social and political sciences at Murray Edwards College, University of Cambridge. And what is human, social and political science for those who don't know? <laughs> it's a very broad course that Cambridge offers and it centres on politics, sociology and social anthropology, any of those you can specialise in, but there are a variety of different options. Four main modules in your first year, politics, international relations, sociology and social anthropology. That sounds huge, incredibly broad and varied. And so how on earth did you know you uh, to do that from your A-levels? I've kind of always wanted to go to Cambridge and I've spent ages, like for a long time I thought I wanted to do maths and then for a long time I thought I wanted to do English. My school, my secondary school, it was a state school and there was a, not a much range of subjects. So when I decided to apply to Hereford, which was quite last minute, just the fact that there was stuff like politics was really weird and exciting to me so I kind of just did it on a whim my parents are quite political so it was something I thought I might be interested in and then I just really really enjoyed politics much more than I expected to and although I at that point was thinking I would apply to Cambridge for maths I changed my mind because for me maths has always been something that has just kind of been more fun and something I've enjoyed doing whereas politics felt like something that could really be an achievement for me and that could be a career for me so when I decided I wanted to study politics, I looked into the options for at Cambridge and there was history and politics and human, social and political sciences. I took quite a while to decide because obviously I love history, but basically human, social and political sciences allows you to specialise in politics from the second year and also to take statistics papers, which is great for me because I love maths. So I decided to go for that. That's so interesting. And I didn't actually know that about human, social and political science. And it's a degree that lots of people will not have heard of. And I think it's so important for students yeah. to think there are so many varied courses they can do. Have you ever kind of had people say, oh, what's that going to lead yeah. to? What would you say to that? Well, I think firstly, the thing is, is that if you end up doing a degree in like architecture or medicine it's very obvious where it's going with the humanities and social sciences and slightly more abstract sciences like maths and theoretical physics it's more that it gives you a skill set and then you can apply it to a range of different careers I've got a few ideas I'd like to be in the civil service I'd like to be in representative politics and I'd like to be an academic and those are all possibilities for me I could also do a law conversion course a lot of people I know who've done my subject did a law conversion course so it gives you the skills yeah. to understand social scientific issues and then you can apply it to a variety of different fields so I'm probably going to specialize in politics and international relations because I would really really like to be a political representative but two of my friends on the course are specializing in social anthropology I also have a friend who's going to specialize in political sociology so it's a really broad range of options and actually that's something that I really love about Cambridge most of the courses are like that they're very very broad you can do physical sciences and that includes physics maths chemistry geology like so much stuff you spend the first two years learning a lot of different things and then you choose to specialize once you know a bit more about what you like that is so fantastic and i think also particularly for students who do have a really broad interest base and i think that's what's so great about seeing students like you where actually you like the maths and you like the english and actually where is it that you can marry those real interests and those big broad yeah. degrees that give you as you say the skill set is fantastic when you arrived at Sixth Form College, so did you already know you wanted to apply to the really top universities? And how did you get that confidence to apply? I knew Cambridge from a young age because one of my dad's sisters lives there. So I'd, I'd been there a lot and my mum's cousin lives there as well. So I knew the city really well. And I basically just felt like I'd always been in love with the university in a way. A couple of people in my mum's family. So one of my mum's cousins went to Cambridge. And also because when I was really little like up until I went to high school I didn't really care about anything except maths and English and I knew I wanted to study maths at that point so Cambridge seemed really obvious because it's it's supposed to be very very good for maths kind of around GCSE time I learned a bit more about current affairs and found that more interesting and then obviously I really love politics at sixth form so that's when I kind of switched what course I wanted to do but I speak to a lot of my friends at Cambridge and a lot of them say you know I applied never thinking I'd get in 
One of my best friends at Cambridge um, is a medical student. She was always like, it was almost a joke me applying to Cambridge because I never thought I'd get in. But she's a really amazing, brilliant scientist. And, and so they, they were like, yes, come. Although it is daunting, it's, it's worth applying. I know that a lot of people think, oh, well, the application process is really long. It's difficult. It's going to take so much time. So what's the point in doing it? I'm not going to get in. Well, firstly, if you do get in, it's so, so amazing. It's worth it. And secondly, it's really useful in terms of skills like the interview. That's the first kind of thing of that type I've ever done. There are also the exams, which are great preparation because they encourage you to think really broadly. Like my history and politics A-level exams, I knew what I was writing about. I just had to learn the stuff and learn how to write an essay. And I was really interested in the content, but it was more of like learning how to do it. Whereas for the Cambridge entrance exam, I think the question I did was, is meritocracy a good thing? And I looked at it and I was like, this is such a broad question. And I incorporated stuff from all of my A-levels and just other stuff I knew. And it was it was so difficult, but so exciting. And it's, it's really good preparation for university to do an exam like that, even if you don't end up going to Oxbridge. I agree. And I think the other thing about doing the admissions tests is exactly as you say, often A-levels, you're taught the content and then the A-level is testing you on the content that you know. Yeah. And actually the admissions test is really looking at how you respond when you're given stuff that you don't know or haven't come across and then yeah. in the interview it's the same I found lots of students have kind of gone to their interviews at say medical universities or Oxbridge or the other top Russell group universities and the interview started with kind of things they might know and then very quickly takes them past their comfort zone to see how you respond what was your interview like? Well, and there are a lot of stereotypes about Cambridge interviews and they ask you the really, really, really broad questions. The closest thing I got to a really, really broad question was, what do you think about Brexit? Which was obviously they just they just wanted me to be able to kind of confidently express my opinion. And I really embarrassed myself, actually, with that question because I'm pro-EU. And I said at some point, I think of myself as a European and not a British person, which looked really silly because both of the people interviewing me were actually from Europe, like actual Europeans. And I was just there like, I think of myself as a European. And it just, it looked so stupid. I also, in the same interview, the first question, they showed me a picture of Mark Zuckerberg not turning up to his like trial type thing. And I was like, oh, is that when like there's a trial and Mark Zuckerberg is is like on trial? And they were like, yeah, but what else? And they kept going, kept going. And I didn't notice that he hadn't turned up. Like I didn't seem to process that the seat was empty. So that was really embarrassing. And also in the second interview, I remember I called my mum after it and I was like, mum, the interview went really well, had a great time, told her all about it. And I said, one of the interviewers even laughed at my joke. And mum said, you made a joke? So it was just, it was a really kind of chaotic process. But I really enjoyed both of the interviews, even at the points where I made a fool of myself or said something (laughs) embarrassing. It might be because I go to a really nice, friendly college, but it was, it was actually so not scary. I made so many mistakes. And obviously they just saw that I was really enthusiastic and was kind of willing to think about it. And it didn't matter to them that I didn't know the facts of the Mark Zuckerberg thing it just kind of mattered I was thinking and willing to talk to them about it. If you were in year 12 now what kind of advice would you give about personal statements? So I went to visit my family in Cambridge near the end of year 12-ish and I was really excited about Cambridge and how I was going to apply in the future so I remember on the train back home I wrote a draft personal statement and obviously I didn't look at it again for months but that was really useful just getting something down anything before it becomes really close to the date um, I would really recommend even if it's really bad at least you've got a kind of a structure I was very moralistic in mine I talked about how I wanted to make a difference and this and that I've been really lucky I did some work experience with my local assembly member so I um to any students who live in Wales assembly members are generally really interesting they do similar stuff to MPs but they're usually easier to access so you can just email them and ask for work experience and quite often they will be willing to to do that. And I did get work experience with my assembly member for a week. That was really, really cool. And I wrote about that in my personal statement. I also wrote about books. Obviously, I wrote about books that I had read and then I reread them before the interview. So even if you write about books that you have read and you know you've read them, reread them before the interview because obviously you don't take in everything in a book. So it's really, really important to reread them because if they ask you a really random question and you've read it but you've forgotten it, then it's just awkward and you'll feel really bad and it'll throw you off. So reread them. How about the teaching at Cambridge? How does the teaching work?
So it very much differs from subject to subject. Everyone has lectures and supervisions and supervisions. They're called tutorials at Oxford. They're amazing. They're the best thing. I think they're what makes Oxford and Cambridge so good. It's basically you're in a group of between like one and four, depending on the subject. For me, I'm usually with one other person, but sometimes I've been on my own. And you just with your teach a teacher in your college in that subject you've written an essay or done a piece of work for them beforehand you talk about that and then you just spend an hour or an hour and a half basically just discussing the subject and learning more about that module and it's so much fun doing the essay was hard work the actual supervisions were just so enjoyable because you're basically just talking about something really interesting i've got friends who do medicine and medicine is so intense and they have supervisions like on the weekends and stuff so they'll come home from their supo and it'll be 8 p.m on a saturday and I'll be like, oh, are you okay? And they'll be like, yeah, it was so much fun. We learned about nerves. And I'll be like, okay. Everyone really enjoys their supervisions. There's also lectures and you can take notes if you want. You don't have to. They usually will have some notes for you. Sometimes I'll record the lectures so you can listen to them again later if necessary. And they'll have slides which they'll put online for you to look at. Do you get to choose your route through? Do you get to choose different kind of modules to learn? Or is that all set for you? At Cambridge, everything is very, very flexible. Um, it depends what course you take. Obviously, if you take law and I think economics, you don't get to take choices in the first year. But in the vast majority of courses, you take choices all the way through. So for HSPS, there are four core modules in the first year, politics, international relations, sociology and social anthropology. And you can either take those four core modules, which is what I've done, or you can swap one of them out for archaeology, biological anthropology or psychology. In the second year you specialise, so you can either specialise in one thing or you can specialise in two things. So I'm going to do politics and international relations. And then from the second year onward, whatever thing you choose to specialise in, there's so much choice. So I get to make a choice with every single one of my modules. So next year I'm going to do a module on political thought from a few different options. I get to choose a module on comparative politics between two regions in the world. And I just choose both of the regions that I want to compare to each other. And then there are, um, there's one on international organisation that I'm going to take. And then the last paper, I just have completely free choice and I'm going to do one on political statistics. That sounds so exciting. What a yeah. broad range of options. I know, it's great. It's yeah, amazing. Really, really good. So if you were in year 12 now, what would you suggest that students could... Obviously, you're not going to have that much access to books at the moment. It doesn't have to be books. It can just be newspaper articles, loads of which are free online or Hereford Sit Form has a subscription to JSTOR and they have so much great stuff. You just search a few keywords and you'll find amazing stuff. Around half of the articles that I use for my work at the moment are from JSTOR. There's so much good stuff there. Obviously, there's also podcasts. People doing politics, actually, David Runciman, who is my lecturer in this, this year, has done a series of podcasts, which are basically very similar to the lecture series that we had with him. And they're called Talking Politics with David Runciman, History of Political Thought. The lectures were great, so I would really recommend the podcasts. And they're basically very similar to the first year politics lectures. Brilliant. That's a tip. <laughs> oh, to one of the top universities like Cambridge or Oxford, you have no fun. It's just nose to the grindstone, chained to your desk. What would you say to that? I'd say that's just absolutely not true for two reasons. Uh, one is that you will have fun doing your course. You just will. Your supervisions will be amazing fun. Your supervisors will be like, for my social anthropology course, we had a film every week that we had to go and see. That was really fun. And also there's so much outside of it. I know a lot of people who go clubbing like two or three times a week and are still doing really well. So it's definitely possible at Cambridge as much as anywhere else. And also there's so much extracurricular stuff at Cambridge. It's insane the amount of extracurricular stuff. There's like seven plays on every night. There's always a club you could be going to. There's always a talk on. There's so much sport. I do ballroom and Latin dancing, which is so much fun. I've wanted to do it my whole life. And the Cambridge Ballroom and Latin Club is the most successful beginners ballroom and Latin dancing club in all UK universities. So I was really scared because I've never done any dance like that before. But they're so friendly and so nice. There's also bops. I don't know if people have heard of bops. They're basically like, it's a combination between a house party and going to a club and um, so a college will have a bop and then they'll just put on some really cheesy music and then you and your friends just go and they're quite cheap and you just have a good time there's cheap alcohol and stuff and soft drinks as well that is brilliant and the only other thing is what would you say if people were worried about finances in terms of just finance i would say actually you're probably better off going to a like a rich university like cambridge and oxford because they're able to offer more support so i get a bursary from cambridge which 
has just honestly made everything so good for me because I can't get any money from my parents. I know a lot of people who can, but also a lot of people can't. I can't. So I have my maintenance grant from the Welsh government and I have the money from Cambridge, which is a really significant proportion of what I live on. I think around a third of people are at Cambridge are from private schools. So there will be a lot of people from state schools. There are so many normal people. Um, there are like, so I'm, I've been involved with Access in my first year. Um, and Access is like a program which kind of is to support people who might not feel like they could belong at Cambridge. And it's basically great because Access events, you basically go and eat pizza and just talk about Access and how to get more people to apply. And most of the people there will be people who do come from backgrounds that don't normally go to Cambridge, like people from state schools or low income families, um, both of which apply to me. And I've had a really, 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 really good time there. That is so fantastic. Thank you so much. And it's such a great thing for a confidence boost for students who might come from Hereford or from Wales or from North Hereford or wherever they have come yeah. from to actually kind of go, that could be me. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you with us, Nia. And thank you so much for your insights.